to this episode. Whoa, whoa. Welcome to. Whoa! <laughs> I like it. Welcome to episode three of Julie's Art Farts. Oh, wow. There we go. Uh, whoa, whoa. Um, sh- welcome to. <laughs> yeah. The show where we learn about fine art from our fine <laughs> sister. I'm Tony. I'm Julie. I'm Jenna. I'm Jenna. Sorry. No, it's okay. You're Jenna. It's okay. And um, so this is our third episode. We're rolling now. We're getting more and more listeners and fans and downloads because you can find our show in the Apple Podcast section. Yes. And uh, yeah, for this piece, Jenna, you uh, requested that we learn about today's piece from um, Julie, our art um, expert. Uh, what piece did you choose this week? I chose the Starry Night. Oh, why did you choose this piece? Um. Okay. So. Um. So you know the guy. There's like a picture where the guy's like, <gasps> or like you know that like oh, yeah. emoji like that. I was looking for that, but then I came across <laughs> the Starry Night, and I thought that was so. <laughs> It doesn't matter how we find the art. Uh-huh. It matters that we learn about the art. Uh-huh. <laughs> that other piece is called The Scream, uh-huh. right? Yeah. The, the Scream. Wilhelm there scream. we go. So we'll talk about that in another episode. <laughs> um, so is that the same artist? No. No. It, I uh, feel like it looks like the same. Like the way yeah, it, it was like. like really... Yeah. 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 And they're flat. They're both flat. They have different colors. This one's more Flat. wide, that one's more tall. But I could see where you would say that. Okay, um, so did you know this piece before? No, I, I just was looking for Scream. Wait, what? so this is the first time you saw the piece? Yes. Do you know it is one of the most popular paintings? Like wait, wait, cultural? wait. Now, you know what I like to do? It's a top what painting. Oh, I, yeah. Like, <laughs> how many? Is it a top... 20? That people people know of? Yeah. I think we could put it in top 20. Wow, good job, Jenna. You... <laughs> so, yeah, this is a really famous one. Um, uh, well, so when you saw this, Jenna, did you think, did you have a feeling of it or an impression or what did you think? I thought it was, like, pretty. I, I like the swirls. I like... Um... They go, like... <laughs> To the side and around and <laughs> up and down. I don't know. I just think it's really pretty. I mean, yeah, this is this is the kind of piece that people have pillowcases of, mm-hmm. posters in their wall. Like, this is a, a pretty picture that people like to have around. Purses and stuff, right? Yeah, this is on everything. This, this is his most well-known piece. And who's this? This is Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. Have you heard that name before, Jenna? No. What? Are you sleeping in art class? He's a top one. I, I don't top have five. art class. <laughs> What's your top five well-known artists? Who do you think is on the Who's on that top? Jenna, who's, who do you know? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, Van um, Gogh, Picasso. Oh, Picasso. Da Vinci. That's it. You oh, here's... Me. No, but they're the, the best ones. Okay. The top three. Here's a fun fact about Jalisa. Her turtle's named Picasso. <laughs> yeah. Say that for the Picasso episode. Okay, so Van Gogh is super famous. Um, where is he from? He is from the Netherlands. He's Dutch. Ah. <laughs> we're out of... You don't look like you expected that. I didn't. All. I did not. I thought she was going to say Italy again. No, we're out of Italy now. <laughs> Okay, we're moving on. Mm-hmm. When was this piece made? In 1889. This, Jenna, this isn't the High Renaissance anymore. Not the High Renaissance. No. It's about four, 400 years later. It's the late, later Renaissance. Yeah, super late <laughs> Renaissance. Um, like really late. This is, and do we know the date? We know that's the exact date this one's yes. painted? Okay. Vincent van Gogh is um jenna if you don't know he's really famous for like he like he's like a tragic character kind of okay with with van gogh like a lot is famous about him personally too right yeah like he is 
He's a, it's a sad story. He's a sad story. Okay, let's save it for the end then. Okay. Let's talk about this piece. Okay. Um, we have, and I hope all our listeners have with them, their tape measures. Tape measure. First tape rule. Measure, I, measuring tape. Is it, what is it called? I guess it, if you're measuring tape, then it's a tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yo, how long, how wide is this tape here? It's about an inch. Okay, so. Okay, so let's get to the facts. First rule of art farts, have your measuring tape. Okay, so 29 inches high. No, I was at, I opened up to 25. Oh. Okay, 29 high. Impressive. Okay, 36 inches wide. Okay, right off the bat, this bothers me a little. Why? It's not square and it's not widescreen. It's not like a movie screen and it's not like a square. <laughs> it's like a TV that's four I by would, three. I think most easel size paintings are about this um, ratio. Hmm. I imagined it that size, like about. But it would bother me a okay. little bit. Why? I want it's a it's a horizon, right? It's a sky. It's a nighttime. Mm-hmm. I want it to be wider. Okay, well, I think when I tell you about where he paint painted it, you'll maybe get a different feeling about the size. I'm a little excited about this. <laughs> okay, what what kind of what what materials are we working with here? It is oil on canvas. Okay, oil just like Da Vinci used in the Mona Lisa. Mm-hmm. Oh, but on canvas. Canvas, so different, different materials. Oh. How would the oil behave differently on these two different materials? Well, usually with canvas, you would do something where you prime it, so the paint goes on really smooth. But Van Gogh liked to do something where he wouldn't prime the canvas, so sometimes the paint would just soak up, like uh, if you're painting on cloth. Uh, he liked he liked the color. He liked the texture that he got from that. Um, Actually, in this image, I don't know if Jenna had the same image, but you could see a little bit of that on primed canvas. Oh, right. on the edges, if you look really closely on the left and the the like left center and the right top, you can see the oh, ma- the material like mm-hmm. behind the paint. He didn't go to the edge or something, or yeah, I mean, you can see with his brush strokes, he didn't care about that kind of perfection. Yeah, yeah. that's that. Oh. So, um, but also there's layers and layers of paint on this. So in another painting where you would see how the canvas soaked up that paint, this one you don't really see mm-hmm. that. There's so much paint on it. So in the previous two images, uh, things we talked about, the Mona Lisa and the David, uh, they looked like works that took a long time. I mean, we know the David took many years and we know the Mona Lisa is very like real Right, Jenna? Like, the Mona Lisa looked like a real... Yeah. And, like, a lot of skill and detail and very fine. Mm-hmm. What do you... How do you think about this one, Jenna? Like, if you compared... This one, I feel like, is more, like, what you want it to be rather than what it is. So, mm-hmm. you're, you're feeling what you're getting from it, right? Yeah. And how the way he painted it, it's what he how he wanted it to look. Yeah, because not... I know my my sky does not look like that. <laughs> right. And if if you if you stepped outside your house right now and your sky looked like that, you should go back inside and pray because the sky <laughs> shouldn't look like that. You know, it should look like the Mona Lisa sky. Um, how long? You know, that's that's an interesting. We'll get to that later too. How, how long? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> how long do you think something like this took him? Or how long would it take some, him to do a a piece like this? If if. If we don't think about him, like, covering or... Well, he painted... There's a lot of paintings in this year, so we have... We have a lot of works during 1889, so he did a lot during this time. He's producing and, a lot yeah, of Yeah, he's things. just painting. He, that's all he's doing, he's painting. Like, not a couple a week. Maybe. Um, and also, so I guess I'll talk about this a little bit now, but he, during this time, was in an asylum... So that's all he did. He was in a crazy house, Jenna. Wait, I don't know what that is. He was. Like, they thought he was crazy. Well, he put himself in in the asylum at this time. 
an asylum is like an old a place that doesn't really exist like that anymore like a jail for people who have mental problems oh so he put himself there he felt he was yeah he he said he had seizures um at this time so he put himself in there so i guess we could go back to how this is a he is a tragic character and it's sad he was um depressed pretty much his whole life he was always considered a failure at everything he did a um, failure are you mm-hmm. kidding me um, jenna he only sold one painting throughout his whole life what and he is what? one of the best, most known painters ever he sold one painting people did not like his work the first two shows we talked about really successful and celebrated artists of the renaissance italian renaissance this guy was not successful not at all he painted this when he was 32 he committed suicide a year later I'm wow that's s- young this yeah. is a sad episode of Julie's Art Sorry, Farts. I didn't know that. Like, I knew, like, he had issues. Mm-hmm. He cut his ear off one time. Yeah. What? <laughs> he was, he was very emotional. He, he went through a lot of things in his life. Um, he wanted to be a, a religious man, and it didn't work out for him. He moved to Paris. That's, so that's where he painted this. He was in Paris. Uh, he was in France. But he moved to Paris to see what else was going on, and mm-hmm. he didn't feel good with that. Um, and also we know all of this in great detail because he is famous for his letters that he wrote to his brother, Theo, where mm. everything, we pretty much know his, uh, his whole life. Yo, Theo, yeah. <laughs> things are kind of rough for me. I only sold one painting. <laughs> so his brother was actually an art dealer. He sold art in Paris. Oh, not a good one if he can't sell well, his own sell his- brother's... No one would buy it. He, 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 you know, no one would buy it. But um, he was his biggest supporter. Okay. We all loved him so much. Why? Okay, Jen and I, we, we, Jenna said, like, this is pretty. She likes mm-hmm. it. I know this. This is really famous, iconic. I'm mm-hmm. sure it's really important for many reasons. Why, when he painted it, people didn't care? What, what's a, what is it about him or well, art world at that time? Okay, so let's go to... What time he was? He was in the, he was a post impressionist artist, so that means a little after the impressionist. Okay, so the impressionist maybe we'll learn about that in another episode. Is this time of I think I'm right like French painters a lot mm-hmm. who would do these beautiful like landscapes very sometimes very light, light colory, kind of feminine. So the thing is, pink um, and yellows. To be pretty much an impressionist, you're in Paris. Uh huh. You focus on light. And color. And and painting from nature. So you're painting outside. Uh So those are the things of Impressionist. Now, um, a little later, Post-Impressionist, which is roughly around 1886 to 1905. Write that down, Jenna. It'll be on the test. (laughs) They're changing a little bit of techniques. Um, They're still working from nature, but they're also thinking about pattern and form and color instead of just... Instead of just light, they're also using shapes and yeah, to to and that was that came a lot from Japanese prints, which was really popular. A lot of these people collected them. It changed it, that changed a lot of what art became. So that's what he was looking at at that time. He loved Japanese prints. A lot of his art. Was how how do you get to do all this traveling if you can't sell? Oh well, no, the Japanese prints came came to France. Oh. No, oh, how? Well, okay, let's, uh, so a lot of times um, when when uh, people would buy things like special cups and fancy things from across the sea, mm-hmm. Japanese prints weren't considered such great art. Oh, I know this. It was it was, it was like the of, wrapping paper, yeah, packaging material. So in Japan, they would they would if they are shipping you a glass thing, they would pack it. The paper all around it would be art piece, like print of art. Oh. So that's where people started going like, whoa, this stuff is Yeah, awesome. what's this stuff? Yeah, like this is totally changing things. Also, they were a little naive about it. Like, oh, they don't really understand, uh, you know, space. But um, uh. they're like, oh, it's interesting. Which was in the Japanese impression, so they were a little dumb about that. But um, they took it and they're like, this is amazing. And then they started doing exhibitions on it and it became very popular. People loved what they saw. It was different. Huh. 
Okay, so why is this piece the one that you said maybe this this is his most famous one, probably? I would say it's the most well-known, yeah. He's got this one. He's got his self-portrait, right? I, yeah, the I know. Se- there's a lot of self-portraits. That's why I'm a little, like, um, I'm not sure which one would be his most famous. Uh-huh. He painted himself a lot. Uh-huh. A lot of times he was in an asylum. So he just had like he's just sitting in a oh and that's why I wanted to bring that a, up what in you said about the a view. cold room with a mirror maybe yeah this is uh, the view from his window in the asylum so he's in that like oh. house for the people who need help mentally disabled or criminals sometimes and stuff and this is like his it's like a jail room kind of yeah it's a little it's a little dorm little room and this is all he can see from looking out which is you can see that now I I think now that you know that. Mm-hmm. It's a different way of painting a landscape. It's cut. It just it starts at a weird place that normally landscapes wouldn't start. Usually you would see the houses, the bottom of the houses. You would see the ah, ground. You would see the bottom of the This one's got tree. more sky yeah. instead of it being split down the middle, right? Maybe. Well, I mean, not down the middle, but just that. Why is it like, why Why would you just cut the, the bottom of the right. landscape? Usually you would see ground so so this is a piece where he was it was out of the circumstance Mm -hmm. it was what he had to work with what he saw jenna if you looked out your window right now what would you see um a house okay i want you to try painting it but don't paint the bottom of the house okay (laughs) follow like van gogh um uh how did this painting come to be where it is. The other t- the other arts we talked about were done by like, were paid for mm-hmm. by rich people or the church. Mm-hmm. This is him painting in his cold dorm. How 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 does it get to be in a museum? Where did it go? Well, eventually, after he died, you know, he became well known, mm-hmm. and all his stuff. I mean, he's one of the most. Uh, what did you say? He sold the most artworks. Now, as an artist, he's one of the so most, he's like, well, well, posthumous, posthumously, I never know how to pronounce that word, so don't look <laughs> at me funny. After death, like, super famous. Yes. I don't understand how that works. Like, he, someone dies, and then all of a sudden, everybody likes his artwork just because he died? Well, I think, like, maybe he was ahead of his time. Maybe people didn't understand it at the time, and later they go, wow, this is different. What you know? What he was doing wasn't done before, and it's 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 beautiful, right? So I love ma- it. So maybe there's two parts to it. Maybe there's the part where like half of it, yeah, he's genius. He's doing something awesome. And the other half is the sad story. Kind of makes it more interesting. And I think with that is because we know everything about him and uh, the letters. So his character is important. Mm-hmm. We uh, this is very moody. Like for you know, you say mm. it's beautiful, but. Uh, this tree, the cypress tree, he used it a lot um, to represent death. You That's know? that big green thing in the yeah. left that kind of makes you feel... Looks not, like seaweed. It makes you feel like not balanced and uncomfortable. And those, I think those trees were really um, like around uh, cemeteries uh-huh. in France. So that's why they kind of associate that with death. Um, but the... He told, he explained to his brother what he felt during the mm-hmm. time. Um, just not not okay. He was not okay. So this is not, you know, a happy painting. Like, and we know that. To make it, to make like a dumb modern um, comparison. It's like, Jenna, do you know who Amy Winehouse is? No. Man, Jenna's like really young. Yeah. <laughs> that somebody who just died a few years ago is before her time. Okay, well, like, I think this is like, you know, any popular musician who dies young. That How old was Michael Jackson? <laughs> he was like in his 50s or 60s or something. But like, oh. um, then their character becomes more magical. And you look back at their work and you look for the things that are dark or creepy or mysterious. And it makes it more interesting and then now the work is limited there's no more van goghs so whatever's there after he dies becomes more valuable oh so like if they stop making one thing um it becomes more val- valuable mm-hmm. yeah i would say that would okay. be fair 
because as soon as like I mean, even today, if an artist who's popular dies, then his artwork is going to become more expensive really quickly. Mm -hmm. ah, where is this piece at now? It's in New York in the Museum of Modern Art. What? Have you seen it? I have. What? How is it? It's really pretty. It's really, really pretty. It's really crowded. It's kind of hard to get in front of there. This is a painting I feel like you would want to spend some time with. Uh -huh. And you don't get that really in the museum. The colors are gorgeous. Okay. So, um, Jenna, here's something you're going to like. There's a conspiracy theory, right? So this, so Van Gogh was a little, um, like he was, he had serious issues, right? Uh -huh. Serious mental issues. So like I said, he cut his ear off, like to show his love for a woman. That's, a That's the story of it. Like he sent it to her, like I love you so much, I'll cut my ear off or something like that. Like, oh, that's how you uh -huh. they represent it. Yeah. But there's isn't there a theory that he licked his brushes, uh -huh. and he got poisoning mm -hmm. from the oils and the paints, and that affected his mind that's, physically. Um, so a few artists have been like said to do that, but it's not like you lick it like. Like a lollipop, they're not. Really they're just like, wetting it, like in between. They're kind of just like a like to to um, make the tip pointy. Pointy, yeah. yeah. So it was just a quick, like you know, a quick time. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but after doing, if you do that thousands of yeah, times, this is you know, like a chemical. Yeah, nature. you're not supposed to put the chemicals in don't your mouth. Do yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, is that a crazy theory, or do you think that? I've heard that, and I, but I I think a lot of I mean it could be. I wouldn't say no to that. Right. I think a lot of artists kind of just did that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a thing. Did he do like drugs or anything? I just wet it. When I like paint, I'll just, to make it pointy, I'll just like wet it. That's what then... you're supposed to do. I think, but so it. many artists just wouldn't be bothered for that time. You They're know, in the kinda, middle of working. You just do it. They're in a passion of the moment. Yeah. <sighs> You know what? I did make a mistake earlier, though. I said he was 32 years old, but he was 37 when he passed away. So he was 36. Oh, but he was 32. when he, Oh, when he painted this, how old was 36. he? 36. Okay, so I have a few more years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get working on this one. Um, from the ones we've done so far, I think this is the one I would want in my house the most. Huh. I think this is actually like my favorite out of the ones that we've already done so far. I like it. Out of the three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Julie, you went, huh? Why Why the huh? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree from the three. Hmm. I like it. Because, I mean, I wouldn't want... Okay, I get it's like the Mona Lisa, but I don't want a woman staring at me while I'm trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. And right. then, um, I don't want a sculpture in my bedroom. Right. Especially that big. It wouldn't yeah. fit. It would be downstairs and it would be coming through your floor. Uh, yeah, like your, just like a head on my floor. <laughs> this, um, one, this one would actually be nice to go to sleep with on the wall. Yeah. I feel like um, if I was like there and if that was like an actual like reality, um, it, I feel like it would be like quiet and like pretty and like. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the interesting yeah. one about this one. This is the first one we've done where. You really can put a lot of your own emotions. I mean, there's the Mona Lisa too, which you think about but the smile, but this is the one where it's like, how does this make me feel? And that's, I mean, that's his goal. Van Gogh was the most emotional guy ever. He was all about emotion. In all his letters, he talks about the colors, how the, the colors make you feel, how his painting style makes you feel. He wanted you to feel as much as he felt. You know, he put everything into these paintings and he painted Ooh. a lot. So, I guess well done, Mr. Job, Van Gogh. Right? <laughs> Mission accomplished. Because, you know, this one sh jumped out to Jenna when she was looking for the screaming guy. Yeah. She's like, oh, this one's pretty. <laughs> I hope it's popular. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I like it. Thanks. Um, Anything else? Yeah, I did want to... A couple years ago, I found this video of like a, a TED talk. It wasn't a TED talk. It's like TED Ed. I don't know if you know about mm -hmm. like little educational videos about uh, turbulence and how hard it is to describe what turbulence is, you know? Yeah, when you're in an airplane and then you get that feeling of up and oh, down. Oh, no, I'm going in an airplane in three days. Don't tell me this. But, like, um, the motion 
for like when water is flowing. Mm -hmm. So um, like mathematically, people have always had a really hard time. Um, Math. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> But they said um, art is a way to depict it really well. And in this image, and you got to put the video up, right? And the, can you put the video? Yeah, I can link up? to a video. Because okay. also it's just a really cool looking video. The art mm -hmm. is really good. But um, the way he drew these swirls is like a perfect representation of turbulence. And oh. they say it's actually really like people study it a lot. Um, and these like swirls in, in science, they're called eddies, like E-D-D-Y-S. Math. <laughs> and um, the way they kind of protrude from the other getting smaller and smaller, <laughs> um, he just represents it really well, apparently. And it's, so it's an interesting in the thing. middle of, of this, like, chaos in his head and, uh -huh. and depression and it's going crazy, maybe, like, there's this under... If he knows it, or if he doesn't, there's like this genius. There's this, yeah, genius of understanding the world and physics and math and science. Yeah, it's really interesting. <laughs> ah, well, I'll link to that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Julie, for getting us all educated this episode. Yeah. Thanks, Jenna, Thank for you. picking a cool one. I think I should end this on a sad note for Van Gogh. It's a little bit. Yeah, why not? Sad. Let's get sad. <laughs> I've never heard such a suggestion. Hey, how about we end this sadly? <laughs> no, I think, you know, about Van Gogh's life, we should end it. Yeah, I'm, and then we got to yeah. sign off and say more things, but go ahead. Oh, are there more things? Well, uh, I'll say it later then. Okay. Should I say it now? I'll say it now. I yeah, say it now, because I don't want to end <laughs> okay. so sadly. So, um, we know Van Gogh shot himself, and there's some... Um, I didn't know that. I just said... Yeah, I knew that. Oh, he committed suicide. Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. I forgot to say he shot himself. And there's also kind of a funny horrible joke about how he failed at that too because he committed mm -hmm. he shot himself to kill himself and he kind of missed he shot at his chest and he didn't die for like more than a day later because he oh. hit something so he kind of slowly died that's a bad joke right but um wait that's like really like mean that's yeah it's it's a joke it's like a dark he, joke he keeps failing throughout his life it's not a real joke it's just a little oh joke. like a dramatic joke yeah like so, ironic um, joke so, you know, he he, uh, he shot himself. He was able to walk back to the asylum where he was, and they couldn't do anything. Kind of, there were no surgeons. His brother came the next morning, and he got to spend the last moments with his brother. Um, and apparently his brother said that Van Gogh's last words were, the sadness will last forever. Because the last oh, that's thing he sad. said before he died. And then Theo, his brother, died six months later. And he was younger than him. <sighs> it's just yeah it's just sad <laughs> it's just he's had a very interesting life and he went through a lot wow and you could see that in a lot of his books <sighs> i learned a lot <laughs> i learned a lot i i didn't know i didn't know like so many things about i didn't i know he was a starving artist but i didn't know like really like he struggled yeah he struggled a lot compared to yeah compared to where we came so, okay so I'm going to try in my next suggestion to uh -huh. like go back up the roller coaster okay. and get more fun and have somebody with a more fun life. Okay, with these first three, we dealt with geniuses who made works that we can see are impressive, right? We, all three were like, holy awesomeness. Like, mm -hmm. this is great. Mm -hmm. Everyone could, like, we're learning more about it, but everyone could respect it. Oh, yeah, that belongs in a museum. Mm -hmm. With the next one, I want to go into something difficult. Something that makes us go like, what? Like, what's that about? Why is that famous? Hmm. I want to go pop. Okay. To the Let's go with the number one guy, Andy Warhol. Do you know him, Jenna? Nope. Okay. You probably have seen a couple things of his. I want to do the one that's like, not the, the most famous one, but the one that's like, what? Why is that such a big deal? I want to do the Campbell's Soup Cam. Okay. That's a All challenging right. one, right? Uh, I mean, no. It is what it is. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about, Jenna? Not a clue. It's a painting of a can of soup. What? I don't think it's a painting. I think it's a screen print. So we'll get into Okay, that. see, I don't even know that part, but she'll <laughs> tell us about that. Okay, so now we're cool. We're moving into a different medium also. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a image of a can of soup. But, ooh, soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Soup, yay. So um, I'm excited to, to see what we, I could learn or figure out about that one. Andy Warhol's Campbell's Can of Soup. Cool. 
I Maybe he just, like, really enjoyed soup. soup. Yeah, yeah, it's an image that gets repurposed, right? Sorry, Jenna, what? Um, I think he just really enjoyed soup. That's probably it. That's, That's probably, probably all. We probably don't yeah. even need to do it now. Andy Warhol, he really likes soup. <laughs> Jenna, where can people find this awesome show? SaveOradio.com, iTunes, or any other podcast apps. I love nice. it. Where can people <laughs> see more of Julie's own works of art? JulisaTorres.com. I love it. I said that really weird, like dot com. <laughs> uh, until then, thanks so much, Julie. Thank you. Awesome job, Jenna. Great job, both of you. Awesome. Thank this you. is a positive show. Thank you for producing the show and editing, because you're going to have to edit this one. Yeah, Tony. Well, now I have to edit out what you just said. Oh, what? Until what? then, <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.